All right, section 10.4 is on exponential and logarithmic equations and inequalities. So I kind of gave you guys a preview of this the other day, but so hopefully it's pretty easy. Um, so an exponential equa equation is an equation containing one or more expressions that have a variable as an exponent. Um, in order to solve an exponential equation, you can do three things. So the first thing, you can get the equation in the form uh, b to the x equals b to the y. If you have that, if you have a number raised to the x equals a num the same number raised to the y, that means x has to equal y. Okay. Um, this will only work if you can get, get them to be the same base. It won't work if you have like 3 to the x equals 4 to the y, obviously. All right, number two, you can take the logarithm of both sides in order to drop the exponents. And three, you can switch to logarithmic form. Okay. I always say when all else fails, try switching forms, right? Okay, so the very first one, I have 9 to the x or 8 minus x equals 27 to the x minus 3. Okay, so I'm going to try to get this in the form where they have the same base. Matt, you with me? Yeah. So what base can I uh, change these to? 3, because we know that 9 is 3 squared, and 27 is 3 cubed, right? So I'm going to have 3 squared to the 8 minus x equals 3 cubed to the x minus 3. I have 3 to the second, and then it's raised to another exponent. So what do I do with those exponents? Ah, you multiply, right? So you get 3 to the 16 minus 2x equals 3 to the 3x minus 9. So make sure you distribute the 3 to both of them. Okay, so now it's in that form where we have 3 to a number equals 3 to another number. So those two numbers have to be equal to each other. So we just say 16 minus 2x has to equal 3x minus 9. And we solve it out. So add the 2x over, so I get 5x minus 9 equals 16. Add the 9 over, so I get 25 equals 5x. So x is 5. That's it. Yeah. Uh, 3x minus 9, so it's, I had 3 times x. Oops. 3 times x minus 3, like that. So I just distribute it into both. So it's from right here. So you multiply your exponents. It's like if you had like x squared raised to the fifth, you say it's x to the tenth, right? You multiply them. OK, so am I going to be able to get um, the next one into the same base? No. You guys can see 4 and 5 don't have like a common number that you can make the bases. All right, so we can't do that. So we're going to have to do um, number two or number three. So take the logarithm of both sides in order to drop the exponents or switch to log form. All right, so if we switch to log form, okay, if we switch to log form, what would we have? Log base four of, nope. 5 equals x minus 1. So see how that's 4 raised to the other side of the equation. So 4 to the x minus 1 equals what's left of 5. OK, so that's the definition of log form. I mean, that's how we made logarithms. All right, now can we do log base 4 or 5? Yeah, how do you do it? <laughs> yeah, you do log of 5. Divided by log of 4, that's called the change of base. So I could have done natural log of 5 over natural log of 4. I could have done log base 5 of 5. I mean, you'd use any base you want. OK, equals x minus 1. So go ahead and do that. OK, did you guys get 1.16096, something like that? Now, you can write that down for your reference equals x minus 1. But I usually, usually just leave that number in my calculator. So then I'd say, oh, well, in the next step, I'd add 1. And now that's going to be x. And at the very end, round to three decimal places. So I'm going to have 2.161. And that's your answer. So like, nope, you shouldn't freak out. You're going to get lots of weird numbers in this chapter. <laughs> All right, so you can always check these. So you could go back, like on number one, you could plug in 5. 
If you plug in 5, you'd have 9 to the 8 minus 5, so 9 to the 3 equals 27 to the 2. And you guys can try that. So 9 to the 3 is 729. 27 squared is also 729. So you can always check these. Now, if you're going to check one like number 2, I would probably keep that number that was in your calculator. So then do 4 to that number minus 1 equals, and you'll see it's equal to 5. Do you see what I'm saying? So that way it's more precise. So keep the number in your calculator. All right, next up. So I have 7 to the negative x equals 21. Okay, so on that last one, we switch to log form. Okay, so um, how about on this one we try to take the log of both sides? So, or take log of both sides. Now when I say take the log of both sides, you can do log base 7 if you want. You could do natural log. You can do log. You can do whatever log you want. The whole point of logarithms is so that we can drop exponents that are in the base. Okay, so any log you want. All right, so I remember when I um, taught at IU, I always would say, oh, since it's 7 raised to something, let's do log base 7. So I'd have my students do log base 7 of 7 to the negative x equals log base 7 of 21. And why is that convenient? What does the left side become? One. Uh, the log base 7 of 7 is 1, right? And your negative x goes to the front. That's the convenience of logarithms. You can pull the powers to the front. So you get negative x times, and Sarah's saying log base 7 of 7 is 1. Okay, you can also remember that rule where if you have log base b of b to a number, it's just the number, right? Log base b and b cancel, so you get negative x out. So we have negative x equals log base 7 of 21. Okay, and then how do I find log base 7 of 21? Mm -hmm. So you get negative x equals log of 21 over log of 7. So we find that. So I get negative x equals 1.56458. So x equals, if I divide by that negative 1, so negative 1.565. We round to third decimal place. See how it was 4, 5? So we make it 5. All right, and that's your answer. And that worked great. I mean, on all the test problems and everything was fine until they got to their midterm. And have I told you about the midterms at IU? They're written by one person who uh, would never check the tests. And so he'd give out like five different versions of the test. And he wouldn't check like the different versions. And uh, so there would always be like a A, B, C, D, E. And then he'd make a choice F, which would be my answer is not listed, <laughs> which was terrible for students when they're taking their midterm because that would happen like three times on a test. My answer is not listed because you never checked them. There were five different versions. So um, it was very frustrating for the midterm and final. So um, what happened was I had taught my class this method where, oh, if you have seven raised to something equals another number, do log by seven and we'll get rid of the seven to the, you know, the power. But then he put problems like this. Four to the x equals five to the two x minus five, like that. And my students were like, like, wait, what do I do? Do I take log base 4 or do I do log base 5? And it doesn't matter. You can do log base anything. I mean, as long as they just tried the problem, they would have been fine. But they looked at it, and they were totally confused, and they had no idea what they were supposed to do. So uh, since then, I've stopped teaching this method where I do log base 7 of 7 to the negative x. Now what I usually do is natural log, which we'll get to natural log in the next section. But like I was saying, you can do log of anything. So let's say we had 7 to the negative x equals 21. Just do regular log, log base 10, the one that's on your calculator. What if we do that? So I'd have log of 7 to the negative x equals log of 21. The convenience of doing log is that that power now goes to the front, right? Negative x is no longer an exponent. So we pull the negative x to the front. So I get negative x times log of 7 equals log of 21. 
Do you guys see this? It's going to be the same thing. Because now you have negative x equals log of 21 over log of 7. I didn't even have to remember the change of base formula from right here because it's already set up so that I can use my calculator, log of 21 over log of 7. So I think this way is almost easier, just to take regular log of both sides, or natural log. So you get the same thing. So x equals negative 1.565. All right, does that make sense? Yeah, Taylor? Mm -hmm. Yep, when you take the log, you can always pull power to the front. Yep. That's why we invented logarithms, so that we can solve for anything where there's an exponent um, that has a variable in it. All right, so four, suppose a bacteria culture doubles in size every hour. So how many hours will it take for the number of bacteria to exceed one million if you start with one? Okay, so this is kind of hard. You had one like this on your homework, if you remember. Um, so let's say you start with, one. So that's at time zero. Okay, so after an hour, how many do you have? Yeah, you have two. After two hours, how many do you have? Four. So it's just doubling. After three hours, you have eight. Okay, so that means after t hours, how many do you have? Hmm? Not one million. <laughs> we don't know how many hours. So t hours, we'd have two to the t. You guys see that? This was two to the one. This was two squared. This is two cubed. So after t hours, we have two to the t. Okay, now this is like your homework problem. Your homework problem, you guys had the equation. You knew you were supposed to use this, p times one plus r to the t. And then some of you guys had trouble thinking about what r was. So if you're doubling every hour, your rate is 100%. You're adding 100% of what you had before. Does that make sense? Okay, so R is 100%. So R equals 1. So that's why it ended up being 2 on the inside, 2 to the T. And the number you started with was 1. So this is our equation. A of T equals 2 to the T. So you could have done it either way. You could have just thought about it logically like that, or you could have used the formula. The formula is a little tricky, though, because a lot of people think that R should be 200%, um, but you're only adding 100% to the 100% you had before. Okay. So how many hours will it take for the number of bacteria to be 1 million? So 1 million equals 2 to the T. We need to solve the exponential equation. So I just told you, you can do log base 2 of both sides, but what did I say was the easier way? Just do log of both sides. Or switch to log form, right? Okay, so let's do log of both sides. So I get log of 1 million equals log of 2 to the t. That allows us to pull the power to the front, which is what we wanted. So I have log of 1 million equals t times log of 2, so times. So divide by log of 2. That is not the same as log of 500,000, by the way. You can't just divide the numbers. You actually have to do log of the number divided by log of the number. All right, I got t equals 19.932. Did you guys get that? Mm -hmm. So on this, you could say, like, approximately 19.9 years, or you could say approximately, not years, hours, <laughs> or approximately 20 hours, so something like that. Okay, feeling pretty good about exponential equations? Don't get nice numbers. <laughs> get weird numbers. All right, so log equations. So this is when you already have the log and you have variables. So a log equation is an equation with a logarithmic expression that contains a variable. Um, like exponential equations, if you can get a log equation into the form log base b of x equals log base b of y, you can say that x equals y because it's log base, the same thing, of two different numbers. So those two different numbers have to be equal. 
Um, you can also switch from log form to exponential form in order to solve. Okay, so this first one. So I have log base 6 of 2x minus 1 equals negative 1. So I don't have logs on both sides, like log base 6 and log base 6. So let's try to switch to exponential form. Okay, so if I'm switching to exponential form, I have 6 to the negative 1 equals 2x minus 1. So remember, the base of the log raised to the other side of the equation equals the part that was net left. 6 to the negative 1 equals 2x minus 1. What is 6 to the negative 1? 1 6. Mm -hmm. one six. So you have 1 over 6 equals 2x minus 1. Okay, so let's use the fraction capabilities of our calculator. We like that. So you don't even have to think about your fractions because your calculator is doing it for you. So I'm going to do 1 divided by 6. So I get my 1 6. So my calculator, I have 0. 1, 6, 6, 6, 6, all that, 7. All right, now what, do I, what am I going to do? Add the 1. And then what? Divide by 2. So you can do 1 6 plus 1 equals 2x if you want and then divide by 2. Yeah, so now you have 0.583333, which you can write as a decimal. But I'm guessing that this is probably a fraction, so how do I see what the fraction is? Fraction. Yep, you hit math in the first choice. So math 1 and then enter. So you get 7 twelfths, right? So x equals 7 twelfths. You didn't know you could do that? We talked about that. You've never had your calculator out when you tried it. I don't know. <laughs> All right, number two. So you have log base 4 of 100 minus log base 4 of x plus 1 equals 1. All right, I can't switch this to exponential form right now. So I can't switch to exponential because I have two logarithms, right? So what do I need to do? Not times. Yeah, divided by. Okay. Or what was Izzy? Izzy, what were you gonna say? I was gonna say like you pull because it's log four twelve times so you can like pull it out and then. Like oh, can't pull it out. No. Well, yeah, this division. Yeah. So you can combine them with division, right? So it's log base four of one hundred over x plus one. Yeah, that's what I was. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's not really pulling out, but yeah, I see what you're saying. Okay. Another thing you could do is log base four of hundred is a number, right? You could find that number, subtract to the other side, and then switch to exponential. Well, you divide by negative first, I guess. All right, so we used our quotient rule. Okay, now we can do um, our exponential form. So what do we get? Exactly. So 4 to the 1 equals 100 over x plus 1. So 4 to the 1 is just 4. So 4 equals 100 over x plus 1. You can think of it as 4 over 1 and then cross multiply if you guys like to do that. Or you could have just multiplied the x plus 1 over to the other side. It doesn't matter. Same thing. Oops. All right, so if I cross multiply, I get 4 times x plus 1 equals 100. You could divide by 4, which would make your life a lot easier, so you get x plus 1 equals 25. Or most of you guys would think, oh, I'm going to distribute. Subtract the 4, so you get 4x equals 96, and divide, get x equals 24. So that's your answer. All right, I want you guys to try 3 and 4. Notice on 3 you have an exponent, you have 4. What can you do with that? Yeah, bring it to the front first. So you're going to bring it to the front and then divide it to the other side first. Okay, let me get my charger. All right, so let's do number three. All right, so number three, you brought the four to the front. So you get log base five of x equals eight. Now that's four times that log part. So you can just divide by 4 on both sides, just like normal. So you get log, by, log base 5 of x equals 2. 
All right, so now you can switch to exponential form. So you get 5 to the second equals x. So 25 equals x. And that's your answer. Okay, now the second one, oh, yeah, there should be some kind of... So in this you have log base 12 of x plus log base 12 of x plus 1. Oh. Not minus. So how do you combine things that are added like that? Oh. Multiplication. So you get log base 12. of x times x plus 1 equals 1. Tricky, tricky. So this is log base 12 of x squared plus x equals 1. You need to switch to exponential form. Do you guys remember that, that rule that said if we had b to the log base b of x, it's just x? So if you guys are really bad at switching to exponential form still, like if you're really bad at switching back and forth from the two forms, here's what you can think of. If you want to cancel out the log base 12, you do 12 raised to both sides, right? So you could do that. So it's x squared plus x equals 12 to the 1, which is just 12. Do you see that's the same thing that I've been teaching you? 12 to the other side, 12 to the 1 equals what's left, x squared plus 1. Okay, so you can think of it either way. It doesn't matter. But some of you guys are still having trouble with that, so. Can you subtract the 22 with it? Would you not what now? Uh, yep, you're going to have to factor, yeah. So you're going to have x squared plus x minus 12 equals 0. Since you have x squared, you know you need x and x. And since it's 1x squared, like there's not a number in front of the x squared, you can do that trick where you say they multiply to be negative 12, add to be positive 1. So you need negative 3 and plus 4. So you'd get x equals 3 and x equals negative 4. Now, on these ones where you have two answers, check. <laughs> you should always check these ones. Um, because what happens is if you try to take the log of a negative number, see how you have negative 4, and you plug it back in, you'd have log base 12 of negative 4. Do change your base on that. So it would be log of negative 4 divided by log of 12. Try that on your calculator. Try to do your change base. My calculator says error, non-real answer. So yours says you can't take the log of a negative number. Remember log functions, they look like this. There is nothing on this side of the equation. There's no x values that are negative. OK, so this does not exist. Um, so negative 4 isn't going to work. 3 will work. So you can try 3, it will work. Okay, so let's say you have this. So is this what you're asking when they have the same base? Um, yeah. Okay, if they have the same base, so if you have log base 2 of 5x minus 3 equals log base 2 of 4x minus 6. Okay, so Izzy had a good idea. She said subtract them, and then you'd have division and all that. But what else can you do in this case? Yeah, 5x minus 3 has to equal 4x minus 6 because you had log base 2 of both things, and they were equal to each other. So these two numbers have to be the same. So 5x minus 3 yep. oh, equals 4x minus 6. Yeah. So if you have one like that on your homework, you can do that. All right. So next up, so you can also solve exponential and logarithmic inequalities. All right, so the exponential is pretty straightforward. You can keep your um, greater than sign throughout the problem. The log, you're going to need to use critical values. Because you know how we switch it, like if I had log base 4 of x equals 3, we get 4 to the 3 equals x. Well, how do you know that's 4 to the 3 equals x or x equals 4 to the 3? It's the exact same thing. I mean, I just arbitrarily put it in that order, you know. 
Like I could have had the 4 to the 3 on either side of the equation. So on this, you need to use critical values. Okay, so over here, so I have 2 to the x equals 4 to the x minus 1. What do you guys notice about the 2 and the 4? <laughs> yeah, I like the first problem. <laughs> you can get the same base, right? So you have 2 to the x is greater than 2 to the 2x minus 2, right? 4 was 2 squared, so I just replaced 4 with 2 squared. All right, so if 2 to the x is bigger than 2 to the 2x minus 2, that means x, that first exponent, has to be larger than the second exponent, right? So you need x is greater than 2x minus 2. Subtract over, you get negative x is greater than negative 2. So is it x is greater than 2? No. X is, x is less than 2, right? You have to flip your sign. So when you divide by a negative, remember I always used to say red flag. <laughs> so you have to flip the sign. Okay, so if I was drawing this on the number line, I'd have 2. I'd have everything less than 2, not including 2. So it would be negative infinity to 2, like that. Now on this one, let's pretend it's equal. So log equations, pretend it's equal. And it's actually a good thing to do for the exponential ones as well. But, and then check your points. So I'd have 4 to the 3 equals x minus 2. So that's what I was saying is the big deal on the log ones, because you don't know if it's x minus 2 equals 4 to the 3, or 4 to the 3 equals x minus 2. I mean, those are the same thing with an equal sign. But if you had left the less than or equal to, we don't know which direction it points. Does that make sense? Now, you could use that trick I was telling you. Like, you could do 4 to both sides, and then you would know which way it goes. It would be x minus 2 is less than or equal to 4 to the 3rd. It doesn't matter. I think it's just as easy to use these critical points. Okay, so 4 to the 3rd is 64 equals x minus 2. Add the 2 over, so you get 66 equals x. That's the point that's significant on our number line. You need another point, though, in this case, which is why it's just as easy as you, to use these critical values. What did I say you can't take the log of? Yeah. So can't take log of negative number. So that means the x minus 2 part has to be greater than 0. It can't be 0 as well. So you can't take the log of a negative number or 0. So it has to be greater than 0, so that means x has to be bigger than 2. So let's put 2 on there. So I have to have everything bigger than 2, so I'm not going to test anything on the left side, because I know that won't work. So let's test, I don't know, something in between 2 and 66. Doesn't matter. 3. <laughs> so let's do log base 4 of 3 minus 2 and see if it's less than or equal to 1. So we're plugging in x equals 3. So that's log base 4 of 1. So you could do log of 1 divided by log of 4. Hopefully you guys remember this rule. What's log base 4 of 1? Zero. 0. So 0 less than or equal to 3? Yeah, so it worked. Now if you tried like 67, so log base 4 of 67 minus 2, that would be log of log base 4 of 65. So you'd have log of 65 divided by log of 4 on your calculator. That's 3.01 something. That's not true, right? So it's only in between those two points. 66 gave us exactly equal to 3. 2 gave us undefined. 2 would give us a log of 0, which we can't do. So it's parentheses 2 to 66 bracket. So definitely try your homework problems. Um, if you have questions, come in with questions. Remember, it's not going to be due till Tuesday. I changed that because I forgot about Pi Day. So it'll be due on Tuesday. Um, so come in with questions. I'd be working on a log bingo. You guys could get most of that done for sure. So 10.4 and log bingo.